Next speaker of the day is architect Sujit Nair. He is, his course material is the fifth semester computer applications in architecture at three. It's page 47 of the syllabus document. Semester 4 and semester 5 really is about implementation. 
And then um, the elective that Smarad spoke of a little earlier, which I thought was about some introduction to parametric design, etc. Um, if there is some sort of discussion on that, maybe so you're only talking about parametric design later on. So you focus on semester five on how to sort of implement this whatever you've learned in semester three and four, and then you kind of figure out what the suitability is. So must be a crucial extension of architecture design studio. So the core distinct faculty must collaborate with the tutors of CA, and CA is my abbreviation for computer applications architecture. So there has to be some dialogue there. And digital fabrication, somehow it seems like a very esoteric term, but really, I mean, anyone knows what laser cutting is, and everyone knows what CNC milling is. And typically, you have access to this uh, technology already in engineering campuses. So it should be uh, possible to sort of somehow tie that up too. And it can be very sort of basic things. It doesn't have to be anything very fancy. Um, easily sort of accessible technology. Uh, and exposure to workflow. So what is, how do you sort of use, what is the relationship between AutoCAD and Photoshop and Rhino and you know, what, how does one work? Uh, what is the relationship between these software packages? So those are very simple things. And you know, I think the focus should be on how to sort of explain that to the students rather than really give them a lot of, or teach them all the possible commands in AutoCAD or all the possible sort of commands in Photoshop or, and so on and so forth. So, I have a sort of alternative uh, that I have in mind. Um, so, what I think is that maybe it should be sort of more scenario based. So, <clears throat> coming back to the issue of how do you make it less teach out of manual kind of approach. <clears throat> so, let's talk about six steps maybe. So, students already know some AutoCAD and some SketchUp or whatever and maybe some Photoshop from the earlier semesters. So, you draft your architecture a studio project <clears throat> and you work with the CA tutor to implement the project precisely in AutoCAD 2014 <coughs> Sorry. and then you 3D model that using SketchUp and these are sort of very basic steps that is you can use it for your initial stages of design and then you use it a little bit for design development and eventually for your final project so you interact with the CA tutor and maybe even with your uh, design tutor and then you learn the relevant technique for the project. You don't have to learn all the possible tools in SketchUp to actually build your project. It could be just two or three steps. So then you te the CA tutor teaches you a sort of rendering technique and then you learn Photoshop because you want to sort of <coughs> tweak this and add a tree and maybe add skies to your images. And then there's a project presentation which could be actually your core design studio uh, project in this case, I think it's a museum, art gallery, etc. in that semester. So you've already learned four tools in this scenario. So it's the, this is the introduction to a typical workflow, which I imagine you would actually have in a professional practice as well. So you've learned this. Maybe there's another scenario <coughs> where you're introduced, you're introduced to the various steps in digital fabrication. So you know some AutoCAD, you know some Photoshop, you do say two weeks of basic Rhino or Max or Maya, and then the tutor sort of identifies something very basic, say you take a tower, you twist it, or you take a cube and deform it, something very basic, you slice that up a little bit, you render it, you slice that up a little bit, you take drawings out, you take it into laser cutting, and you have a, a model, and the end of the semester, you have like a whole bunch of models in acrylic, maybe in, uh, in cardboard, maybe in steel, so you know, you're already sort of ta talking about digital fabrication, and in fifth semester is a good time, because then you're already sort of setting the tone for uh, taking this forward, so you know, someone's interested in digital fabrication, they're pro maybe definitely going to do something better as they approach the thesis semester. So there you go, so you've learned five tools here, and you know a little bit about digital fabrication. So it could be any number of scenarios, you know, and I think what this creates is sort of rich body of work um, across the schools, maybe every semester in each school you have one scenario, or you have different scenarios across different schools becomes quite uh, quite interesting so the, I've just cooked this up you know I just said sometimes it's just drafting and vector graphics and publishing software which is maybe <coughs> in design or illustrator or something like that otherwise it could be something as simple as digital photography some 3d modeling visualization and collaging so it doesn't really always have to be very complicated um, you know software learning <coughs> and a whole lot more so like I was saying, so adopt basically a scenario-based curriculum in schools of architecture for computer applications. 
So therefore, what does this lead to? So you, this offers better choices within an overall, overall curriculum framework. And you're not always dependent on the availability and suitability of CA tutors. Someone and everyone always knows some AutoCAD and Photoshop and even some SketchUp. So you can actually really, once you set the framework, you don't really need an expert to come and teach you these tools. Maybe it's just a, you know, a former student or maybe someone within the department can that actually take this up. The idea is to sort of simplify this and make it more, um, much easier to implement. So with scenario-based sessions, better focus on quality of output rather than the learning of the tool itself. Therefore, students invariably set out on their own to explore tools to achieve new results and effects. So you adopt a new scenario every year, like I was saying. Therefore, variety in the body of work from schools. So coming back to that task premise, how an alternative sh uh, slide that I came to earlier. So just want to talk about the alternative a little bit more. It's just going back here again. So I'm thinking it should be nine hours per week. I don't know if the score needs to be increased a little bit more. And the objective is like I'd stated in the beginning. So the alternative curriculum. So this is what I think. So weeks one to two is your exposure to Rhino 5, Max 2014, Maya, SketchUp Pro, if you don't have access to the right tutors to teach you the more advanced tools. And how do you do this? You, you're introduced to just very basic tools. Just maybe a little bit of extrude, a little bit of you know, uh, scale or whatever. I mean, very basic sort of tools. So weeks three to eight, you convert the AutoCAD 2014 project into Rhino. So that's four, four, four weeks to actually do this, four to five weeks. And you work with the CA tutor and your architecture design tutor to implement this. Weeks nine to 10 is introdu introduction to rendering engines and this is very, very relatively straightforward. In this, you obviously learn how to apply materials and how to create environments. And week 11 to 12 is you get exposed to very basic techniques in image collaging, <coughs> like you do in our offices. That's Photoshop CC and maybe a little bit of Premiere to make some videos, but not necessarily. So it's at this stage that you use supplementary tools. Maybe you use a little bit of digital photography if you want to collage your building into your site, or maybe you use a hand sketch and then collage that into Photoshop, and physical models to actually integrate. This happens in week 11 to 12, uh, 12 I imagine. And you understand digital tool interdependencies, like I was talking about earlier. So at this stage, you really know the flow from AutoCAD to maybe Rhino to the rendering engine. And then what you, the output that you get out of there goes into Photoshop. You tweak it there. You have a finished product. And after that, in weeks 13 to 16, I imagine, and I think really the, the idea is to create a finished product at the end. You have something tangible. And all, say, 50 or 60 students in the class have maybe, you know, there's a variety in responses. So you're introduced to vector graphics and pub desktop publishing software, maybe um, Adobe Illustrator and InDesign. And these are very simple tools. They're very similar to CorelDRAW, which almost everyone knows. And you figure out a way to create a booklet or maybe a little, I don't know, a little brochure or maybe a drawing board of your architecture design project, if it's ready by then which I invariably I think you will because you'll have a final review coming up for uh, Architecture Design Studio around then. So, and then you, you, that becomes your sort of CA project or your computer applications and architecture project. And then yeah, we just hope all of this gets done. Thanks.